Hey, what's up? How much weight do you need? So how many grams do you think you'll need? Yeah, but it's still, it's, it's still 2,500 a pound, so I think I've got like an 80 gram piece for you. All right, cool, I'll see you soon. Like the boss see me buying this much stuff at one, one flip. I know, she's sitting right there. I know, right? She's like, what the fuck are you doing? They smell really good. Try a piece. How much are these again? 250. So my name is Ian Prakayastha, and I own Regalis Foods. So Regalis is a specialty foods company that primarily sells fresh truffles, wild mushrooms, foraged edibles, caviar, Japanese wagyu beef. I think the list is like always expanding. Here's some pawpaw fruit that I foraged for, which uh, they look kind of like an overripe green mango, but they have a custardy interior. Like the flavor profiles are kind of like a cross between a mango and a banana. Here's some of my truffle products that I, we make. Here's uh, honeycomb. It's like a star thistle honey with black Tennessee truffle. I also have it in this square form. This Atabakina extra virgin white truffle oil. We've got truffle carpaccio over here. Truffles are an underground fungus that have a mycorrhizal relationship with the host tree that it's growing on. They grow on the tree roots of different trees. No one has really successfully been able to cultivate truffles on a commercial scale. And so truffles are extremely rare and they're extremely expensive. You know, due to their perishability, I mean, you know, truffle may last seven days and then, you know, it rots. So this piece right here is probably like 700, 800 bucks, this little nugget. You can smell it, it's pretty aromatic. My family relocated from Houston to Arkansas when I was 15. I spent a lot of time outdoors. My uncle was actually living in Arkansas at the time and showed me how to forage for wild mushrooms. So that kind of became, you know, a passion for me. And so I would forage for lots of morels and chanterelles and black trumpets in the hills of, of Arkansas. Said to cure cancer, but anyway, I dried it out and you can make teas and stuff out of it, but uh, in Westchester, just crying on a log. But this stuff sells for a lot of money in like medicinal shops and stuff. I decided why not move to New York in pursuit of you know selling truffles full time. Hey, what's up? What's up? Yeah, I know, right? We got, we got. stocky. Yeah, competition is extremely ruthless. It's extremely competitive. I would say there's only probably around three main truffle companies in New York, uh, with Regalis, my company, being one of the three. Why your truck doesn't say uh, Regalis? So uh, my competitors don't slash my tires. <laughs> I don't put my logo on the van because I don't want my competitors, first of all, saying who we're selling to. Uh, and then second of all, I mean, during truffle season, I get lots of different threats and like there's lots of like, you know, illicit activity that like takes place. And front, oh look, here's a competitor right here. Oh my God. Those are like, oh my God, I hate those people so much. They, uh, I can't believe I just saw them. Uh, they, talk about smugglers. These are the people that smuggle truffles back and forth from Italy and completely fuck things up because they avoid going through USDA, through you know agriculture, through FDA, and they just bring them in in their suitcase and uh, go to basically different restaurant accounts. And when they realize they, they can't sell the truffles, they basically slash the prices and sell them like at below cost. And it ends up screwing up the entire market. Oh my God, it was just like, so retarded. How are you? Especially since they're paying so much money for truffles, they want to pick out, yeah, nice, huh? you know, the truffles that they're going to be buying, which makes my life super difficult because I have to go to each and every restaurant and bring a ton of selection for them to look at, and they each go through each truffle and you know smell each truffle and squeeze each truffle, and then we weigh them up and then we do the deal. All right, that's okay. uh, fifteen hundred mm -hmm. grams. So when I first started Regalis, 
I mean, truffles were, of course, the main focus. We now import from more than seven different countries. Yeah, like every morning, I'm either at Newark or I'm at LaGuardia or JFK. It's pretty much, I'd say 90% of the time, I'm at Newark picking up stuff. So we are here at the cargo area. Hello. How are you? So I've got a pickup. Yeah, now we're going to my warehouse to, uh, to sort some of the mushrooms and pick up the delivery van and uh, start our day on the deliveries. Let's carry these in. Heavy. Oh, yeah, okay. Some awesome cauliflower mushrooms. Super nice. They look like a brain. Super lemony. Uh, this is an awesome mushroom. This is a coral mushroom. Holy shit, it's a huge piece. It looks like coral. It has like little hairs all over it. So I'm always bringing stuff in to cater to what my chefs are asking for. These are some beautiful matsutake. These are the Japanese, the ceremonial ones. They kind of look like a penis because in Japan, it's considered like the mushroom of like fertility. Here's some really nice porcini. They, they cut them in half to check for worms. Opportunity tastes great, like even raw. All right, we're almost loaded up here. Good to see you in from Regalis. Hey, how are you? Hey, good. I'm trying to locate a package, hopefully registered in your system yesterday. It's coming to uh, yeah. 130 Leroy. It's a, a hold for pickup package from, I believe, Portland, Oregon. He asked what was in the box today, and I told him, like, fish, placenta sacks, and he, like, it was pretty funny. I had gotten in a shipment of coho trout road from the Spokane Indian tribe in Washington state, and they've been sending it to me, and it's like the row is, like, still in the placenta sack, and so different restaurants can cure it. Last week, they sent me something special, and it was uh, milt. It was basically, like, salmon sperm sacks. I gave some to Morimoto. So this is Eric. He's one of my most beloved customers. Eric Bates, he used to be the chef at Jean George, and he opened Perry Street, and he was the corporate chef for BLT for a long time. And he's the brand new chef at Morimoto, and I feel like the, like the cuisine is like awesome now. Are people buying this from you? Like the- Yeah, Mom Momofuku bought it. The sperm? The sperm too. Really? Yeah, and Asuka, so. That's awesome. It's actually surprisingly delicious. Yeah, I know. It's like a sweet bread. I probably fed it to six people in this restaurant that had no idea what it was. And then you told them and then they threw up afterwards? Or? No, no. I mean, so it's like obviously like a, a shock, like a shocking emotional experience to realize you just ate sperm unknowingly. <laughs> so yeah, he seared up this piece of like salmon sperm, made like a brown butter thyme. He mixed in like a soy mirin sauce that he had made that he like emulsified and then he poured it over uh, the sperm sack over rice. He sprinkled it with like the Japanese cilantro called Mitsuba. So you like little Mitsuba greens on it. Damn, looks amazing. Japanese sperm munier. Spoon, sperm what? Munier. Sperm munier, <laughs> all right. Well, let's taste it. All right. Holy shit. Wow. It's like super creamy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So here's the Wagyu and then the Matsutake and the white truffle. Boom. Cool. All right, I'll take it. All right, cool. So how's the day going so far? It's going pretty well. I hope, uh, I hope you're not hungry anymore because that was our lunch. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got quite a few more deliveries though. This is Ian. Ian, hi, this is Josh Conkin, executive chef at the Green Color Restaurant in Princeton. Oh, yeah, with, uh, with, with Christoph. Exactly, what's going on? How are you? I'm good, I'm good. You know? Yeah. I've changed. You were 19 last year, now you're like 20 this year. E exactly. Well, I just turned 21, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You're older and wiser now. Exactly. I, I don't think age was really, you know, a big factor. I mean, I knew the product really well and I was super competitive with pricing and my customer service was always like really nice. I mean, when chefs 
or in a bind, they would call me last minute and I would always deliver product. Hi, chef. This is good. I've got, I got the porcini. I, I have some nice cauliflower. And, yeah, and coral mushroom, if you want to see in the van. Yeah, so here's the black trumpet. Nice. nice. Here's the coral mushroom, which it's, it's like cauliflower. I overpack my delivery van with tons of product in hopes that when I'm selling to a restaurant that's already ordered something, they'll come out to the van and they'll look through all of my stuff and impulse buy something that looks really amazing in the truck. And nine times out of 10, that's always the case. When a restaurant hasn't ordered anything and I have tons of product I have to move, I'll basically just drive around to all of our accounts and say, you know, come out to the van, I've got some like really cool stuff. And that's how I, you know, sell out of everything I have. Is this a typical day for you or is it? It's pretty, this is pretty typical, like going to different restaurants, oh unloading product, seeing if they need anything else for the remainder of the week. I mean, it's, it's late season, so a lot of the stuff is getting really large, so we sorted these. My girlfriend doesn't even like mushrooms. And, uh, which, you know, is, uh, is ironic because I've always got mushrooms in the fridge. I mean, she, she's grown to like truffles and when I first met her, she was, you know, kind of obsessed with eating like fast food and like McDonald's and stuff. So <laughs> I think we've come a long way since then. People that are interested in food or learning more about food, I think it's super interesting to, uh, to truly understand, you know, where that one mushroom on your plate is actually coming from and not just the labor, but how it gets from forest to plate, I think is an interesting experience that I wish more people could, could learn about. This is a good phone call, not a bad phone call. <laughs> Hello? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, how much did you need? You said the white, right? It's uh, 3,000 a pound for the white. Uh, it works out to around $7 a gram. 